Daniela Bridget Bartlett here with VisionMarketingAndDesign.com. The days of calling to book an appointment by phone are numbered. The only way to adapt is to an, adopt an online booking option or risk losing the 70% of customers who prefer to book online. Many customers complain about waiting on hold and limited business hours. In fact, more than 30% of customers surveyed in a recent poll by GetApp reported that they would rather find another service provider than call to book appointments. So whether you're a beauty salon owner, lawyer, doctor, or any other type of service provider, having a booking calendar is a vital feature to include in your website. Thankfully, Builderall has provided us with this tool, and I'm going to show you how you can get started using it for your business today. So the first thing we want to do is go to the Builderall dashboard, and you can select to add the Builderall booking app to your dashboard by going up to apps and then going to the booking Builder All Booking and just simply adding it to your dashboard. Or you can come inside your website that I've created for this demo today and choose Booking and it goes directly to the app. However, there's another option that I'll show you today. Let's go back to the editor and let's open up our editor here. And if you look in the elements, you can actually go to Booking and drag the app here. Now, since we do not have a calendar created yet, we could simply choose create new calendar and it takes it to our takes us to the booking app. Once inside here, you'll see this tells us how many calendars we have available, how many subscribers or people that have made appointments in our calendar. And then we also have some income and estimated income and information coming soon, but it's not quite ready yet. So be looking for that. Let's go ahead and just create a new calendar. But actually, before we do that, I want to draw your attention to this section here that says hosts. If you go to the host tab, this is where it's going to pull up the information from your Builderall account. OK, but I want to change this to be the name of my business because I don't want my fictional beauty salon. I don't want it to say that this is hosted by Bridget Bartlett. So let's just call this hair salon. And we'll go ahead and save. So now it's going to say that we're hosted by our hair salon. You could uh, change this to whatever you wanted to, or even add new host if you prefer. But for this purpose, I just wanted to show you where you could change that. So let's go back to calendars and create a new calendar. Now you have two types of calendars here for consultations or for events. So for example, a consultation would be a hairstylist, maybe a dentist or psychologist, private classes or individual mentoring. And examples of events would be webinars, lectures, seminars, live releases, or live events and concerts. So since we're using a beauty salon as an example, let's go ahead and choose consultation. And we're going to call this, um, let's see, hair appointments and create new calendar. So the title of our, of our first calendar, okay, let's just go ahead and call this haircut. And let's go ahead and upload a logo. Our logo here, schedule an appointment here for a haircut. We can change the background color if we prefer, but we'll just go ahead and leave that white. We can choose the time zone here. That, so do we want our customers to get the information based on their time zone or do we want to predefine a time zone? If you are a local business, you could choose the predefined time zone, but I like to just let the user choose their own time zone. That way they know when their appointment is available, it is in their time zone, which is really important, especially if you are doing consultations all over the country or in other countries. But so let's go ahead. And for this example, we'll just choose to let them choose their own time zone. Now, after subscription, 
we can choose to just send them to a thank you page that says thank you for signing up, just the default page, or you can redirect them to a custom page. I definitely recommend creating your own page to send them to in your website. So maybe a, maybe just a branded thank you page would work, or maybe if you wanna give them more information like directions to your beauty salon or your lawyer's office or anything like that, you could do that here. For this purpose, let's just go ahead and keep this as the default and we'll do choose save next. Now, let's say in our beauty salon, we have several si stylists, okay? And maybe we wanna give people the option to choose their favorite stylist to set an appointment with. So let's go ahead and make a calendar for our stylist named Pam. And we will go ahead and just leave this description blank, but that's pretty self-explanatory. Let's choose a host and we'll just choose our default host, which is hair salon. Now, do we want Pam to start working as soon as she gets to work? So as soon as this schedule says that she's available, do we want people to start scheduling appointments or do we wanna give her 15 minutes, 30 minutes or an hour to get acclimated and get her station ready? So let's just say we'll give Pam 15 minutes. And how long is each appointment? Let's say probably 30 minutes, but we could select from here if we had a longer appointment. How much time in between each appointment do we wanna give her? Let's just say five minutes. And let's say that Pam only works Monday through Friday and then she has a short day on Wednesday. So we can select her hours here. And that way only the only times that people can schedule for Pam are in this time frame here. So let's say every month of December, Pam likes to take off for family time. We could select or deselect December for Pam and no one will be able to make appointments for her in December. So how many sessions are they gonna need for this? So if this was a dental office and they were doing teeth whitening, maybe they would need four sessions. So this is asking how many sessions are they gonna need and then how much time in between each session. Since this is just for a haircut, we'll keep this as one, but you could change this to any of these options here. Now let's say Pam never likes to work on her birthday and her birthday happens to be one of her normal work days. So let's go ahead and select the 21st, which is a Friday and Pam would be working, but on that specific day, she does not want to work. So we'll just select that and then it will not allow any appointments to be scheduled on that day. We can also choose to automatically approve the appointments or manually approve the appointments. We'll just go ahead and keep that as automatic. And then we can also choose the fields in the registration form when they are scheduling. The, so right now the name is required and the email is required, but the phone number option is hidden. We can make that optional or required. I would say keep this as required if you plan on sending SMS messages to remind them, which is definitely a great practice. So let's go ahead and leave that required and get their phone number when they schedule an appointment. We'll go ahead and click save and next. And now we can choose to send them a confirmation or not send them a confirmation. Let's go ahead and choose yes and we can edit the message that we want to send them. So if we wanna send an email, we can edit the information we're sending them here. Or if you have credits to send SMS, you can choose what message you want to send them here. Let's go ahead and click done. And do we wanna send them any reminders? If you leave it as the default, you will not send reminders. However, you can choose, and I recommend to send reminders at least an hour before. So that is our default, but you could change that by simply clicking here. You can change the information you'll be sending them and how, how far before the appointment you want to remind them. We'll go ahead and click done here and save and next. And do we want to add them to an email list? I definitely recommend adding to an email list. 
Now we can choose an email list for each stylist or just one of our lists that we have already. Let's go ahead and just choose this list I have here. If you wanted to create a new list, you could simply do that by clicking create list and we will add them to that list and click save and next. So now it's configuring our calendar. But there's one more thing we need to do before we add this. We have another stylist who cuts hair as well, and her name is Linda. And we want to make sure that people can book their hair cutting appointments with Linda as well. So let's edit this calendar and add a new group. So let's go back to calendars. And if you click the three dots here, you have some options. Let's go ahead and choose edit. And we'll go to basic settings. And we don't want to change any of this information. So let's go ahead and click save and then go to scheduling. And now you see we have the option to add a new group. So let's go ahead and add a new group for our other stylist named Linda. And we will have the host just be the main host, which is hair salon. And we'll have Linda get started 15 minutes before or 15 minutes after she arrives. But let's say Linda only works the weekend. So we will go ahead and deselect the Monday through Friday. So the only way that people can book with Linda is on the weekend between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. So her sessions will last 30 minutes. So we'll go ahead and leave that as the default. And we want to give Linda five minutes in between each appointment to clean up and get ready. Now let's say Linda is available 12 months out of the year. So we'll go ahead and leave those as the default. Only one session at a time. And we'll go ahead and give a 24 hour notice in between each session. So we'll just leave that there. We don't need to block out any dates, but having a, a group in the calendar specific for each stylist allows them to edit their own time available. So if they did have a doctor's appointment or maybe, you know, a babysitting issue one day, they could block out that specific time on their schedule. But Linda doesn't have any children, so she is free every weekend. She loves to style hair. She doesn't need to block out any dates right now. So we'll just go ahead and leave that there. We can automatically approve the appointments or manually approve. We'll just go ahead and leave that as automatically approve. And again, we want to make the phone number required so that we can send text messages. So let's click Save. Now the next section here is communication. So let's go to group two, which is Linda, and we can customize her communication settings for her group, okay? So let's go ahead and we'll just do yes, send confirmation. We'll go ahead and leave this as the default and choose group two again to select for Linda. Yes, Linda wants to send reminders and we'll go ahead and have it send a reminder one hour before the meeting as well. So we'll click save and let's check out the automation. And for group two, we'll go ahead and add to a subscriber list as well. And we'll just go ahead and let's choose this list for Linda. And we will click save. So now we have our hair salon booking calendar complete with Pam and Linda available. So let's go ahead and just copy the link here to our booking calendar and let's go back to our website. Let's go ahead and click cancel and let's go to, actually, let's go ahead and refresh to make sure that it recognizes our calendar. And I probably could have saved before I did that, but let's go ahead and just go back to the elements and we'll go to booking and then we'll just drag our booking calendar here. So now you can see it shows up with our options. Okay. If we had multiple calendars, we could select those here, but since we just have one, we'll choose haircut. And do we want to show the info or not? Let's go ahead and, and show all of the info. We also have the option here to show all of the calendars or we can select a group to show. So if we only wanted Pam's calendar to show, we could select that or Linda's, but we want to show all of the calendars. So we'll just go ahead and keep that selected and save. So now you can see we have our 
stylus here and we have each one available to start accepting appointments. Let's go ahead and click save and that's fine. And close. And there's one more thing I wanted to show you. Since we already copied the link to our calendar, you could add that up here to the top to your menu by clicking the little gear. And you could add the link and just pasting in the box and select. Or you could also click the link there go to page and then select the page that you have your calendar on. So if I wanted to send them to this page here, then um, so if I had another page that I wanted to send them to, I could select the page and then it would be branded. That's definitely something that I recommend doing, but just a little shortcut, you could paste the link to the booking calendar there and then we'll just go ahead and click save. Let's go ahead and save our website. And let's make our first appointment. So we'll go to the website here and let's go ahead and make an appointment with Pam. So you can see we have our host name here and then we have our stylist name. And let's go ahead and make an appointment for Thursday the 23rd and we will say schedule at 1400. Let's go ahead and we'll type my name in there and my email address and we'll just use this phone number and click schedule. So here is going to be the default thank you page that it goes to. So like I said, it's okay to have, but I definitely recommend creating your own thank you page to send them to. So let's go back to home. And you will see that I've already received my confirmation email. And it says here, hello, Bridget, you are scheduled for this time. It's confirmed. If you want to cancel the appointment, click here. And if I click up here in the menu and go to book appointment, you can see the page opens up here and they will be allowed to make an appointment, but it's not branded to you. So that's why I say it's definitely always best to make all of your pages on your website look congruent with one another so that they don't feel like they just left your website to create an appointment. So that's all I have for you today. I hope I was able to show you why you need to have a booking calendar on your website and how much time this can save you with your business as well as increase the conversions of your website. If you do not have a Builderall account yet, you can get a free forever account by joining my mentorship program at visionmarketinganddesign.com. Tomorrow I'm going to show you how you can integrate Super Checkout with your booking app if you want your customer to pay for the consultation before being able to make an appointment or give them the option to pay ahead of time after they book the appointment. Make sure to leave your questions in the chat, whether you're watching live or the replay, and I'll do my best to answer them. Now, let's go build it with Builderall. Mm -hmm.